Hey everybody, this is Mark with Great News Ministries. And this is a difficult announcement for me. I'm very emotional and this is gonna be hard, but I wanna get right to it. And I wanna be really uh, appreciative of your time. So I'm gonna get right to uh, the announcement. And that is that um, I am stepping down as a full-time missionary beginning on June 30th. So just about a month from now. And this has been an amazing 14 years. An amazing 14 years where God has done so many awesome things. And uh, I don't know who's watching this, but some of you have been with me the, the whole time. And here's the thing. If you have given to this ministry financially, if you have prayed for us, if you have sent me notes of encouragement, if you volunteer to come on the streets or into the subway or into beaches or all those things with us, then you've been part of this ministry too. Evangelism is a team sport and God has done amazing things. So with that in mind, before I get to why it is that I'm stepping down and what you guys need to know about it, um, I just want, can I brag on Jesus? Because Jesus has been amazing. He took someone like, now, if you just know me from YouTube or maybe coming to your church, you might think like, oh, he's a superstar. I'm really not. I'm a very emotional guy. I get very sad and discouraged. And I also, my health is not all that great. So I, I've had medical hiccups here and there that made it difficult for me to do the street evangelism. But God has used me, an imperfect, broken person, to do amazing things. I mean, here are some of the things that happened. Tens of thousands of people have heard the gospel. Let's wrap our mind around that. Tens of thousands of people have heard the gospel. How awesome is that? We know that the gospel is the power of God into salvation to all who believe. How can they believe if they don't hear? How can they hear if someone doesn't tell them? And in tens of thousands of people have. And, and even more, uh, thousands of people have taken gospel booklets and, and, and uh, Bibles and DVDs. DVDs are these round things that people used to use in the ancient world to watch videos. They don't really use them anymore, but they used to, and we used to give away a ton of them. And it, it was terrific. So tons of people who might not otherwise have heard, people who don't go to churches, people who don't go to Christian outreaches, have heard the gospel. How awesome is that? Not only that, but we got to train up Christians. Uh, lots of Christians would either come from all over the country and all over the world to train with me and my team to learn how to do street evangelism, how to do street apologetics, how to uh, effectively communicate the gospel to, to regular people. And, and they did, and we brought them on the street, and we brought them underground, and we brought them to kids' neighborhoods to do kids' clubs, and to do gospel magic tricks, and paint boards, and all the stuff. And, and then they took that, and they went back to where they live, and they're doing it there. And that's really cool. I'm in touch with a lot of them still. And I see they're doing the work of the evangelist, being ambassadors for Christ. And that fills me with so much joy. I want that to fill you with joy too. It's been awesome. And a lot of them are not full-time missionaries. They're just regular people who are doing the work of evangelism in the context of their regular secular jobs. That's sort of where I'm heading, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, other things that God has done, uh, he's, he's allowed me to go into schools and into camps and to, to teach kids, especially the summer camps are great because a lot of kids are unchurched or in the foster care system and they go to camp and this is the only church they get all year and they get for a whole week, they get advanced Bible training in ways that they can understand the gospel. Turn from your sin, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross, he rose from the dead, he's coming back. How awesome is that? A child can understand it. Sometimes an adult is too prideful to hear it. Um, but it's awesome when God saves anybody. So we've done great things there. I've, I've had the chance to meet amazing people, people from around the world. I've given away gospel tracts in, in, in over 30 different languages. When you, give a, when you give a booklet to somebody in their language, they light up. They get so excited. I've had people hug me and thank me for, 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 for honoring their language and giving them a gospel tract in Spanish or Chinese or Hindi or Tagalog or whatever. It's been amazing. I have personally spoken a number of occasions to, uh, I want to keep this friendly, we'll call them adult workers. I think you know what I mean. Um, I don't want this video to get flagged, but I have spoken to people in the adult working industry. One of them started crying on, on the spot, Therese, I still remember her, and she started going to a great Calvary Chapel church in Boston, and I believe she, she came to know the Lord, it was discipling with the pastor's wife, it was awesome. So I, I've gotten to talk to a mob hitman, true story, uh, he was actually very broken up about the type of work that he does, and he was very apologetic, and, and, and I got to share the gospel with him, and it was it was terrific. I've gotten to talk with, with all kinds of, of people, you don't even know, I've talked to, to, to atheists, and agnostics, and transgender, and all kinds, and, and when you talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, and you share with them the love of Jesus Christ, and the urgency of turning from their sin, and, and, and knowing that they have eternal life because Jesus cares for them, 
then even sometimes the most hardened people soften. What a joy. Nothing better than being used by Jesus. It's awesome. I've spoken with neo-Nazis. How crazy is that? I'm a Jewish guy who believes in Jesus, and I have spoken to neo-Nazis. Like, wow, only God could pull that off. But you know what? God wants to save neo-Nazis too. I'm not really excited about what they believe and what they do, but God can change them, and he does. And so we've had that experience. If you've been part of this ministry by by praying or, or giving or, or, or encouraging or any of that, then that's part, that's, you're part of that. You made that happen. Can't do it alone. And it's been, it's been outstanding. Um, we've been able to come up with unique missionary tools, uh, evangelism tools that, that missionaries all around the world are using to this day that we developed. And, and they say, oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to do that. And they did. And they are. And so that's really cool. We're, we're helping to equip the saints. And, and that's terrific. One of the, my favorite things that we did was we were able to build a website, an evangelistic website, great-news.org. Where, because sometimes somebody doesn't want to, some, not everybody wants to talk to people. So that's the COVID. People are very reticent to that. And they just want to see the gospel presented in an effective, uh, compelling way on their own in private. We made a website. It looks great on a phone. It looks great on a laptop. It looks great on a tablet. They can go to great-news.org. You can share share that site with your friends. I'm going to keep that website going as long as I'm able to do that. So uh, it's, it's, it's a good gospel presenting website, great-news.org. God has done awesome things in these 14 years. Me leaving the field is not a failure. It's just a change of season. And I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Uh, people who, uh, who, who know me uh, know that uh, that for a couple of years I've been really struggling with whether or not I'm going to continue on as a street evangelist. Uh, I, I, I didn't feel the calling of God on my life doing that the last couple of years. I've really been questioning it. I, I've, been, I've been praying. I've been getting wise counsel. I've been fasting. I even took a sabbatical uh, to, to really focus on that. And what I've come to the conclusion is that now's the time for me to, to step down and not do this as, as a full-time paid job anymore. And quite frankly, where God has been changing me over the last few years, if you've been following the ministry, you see I do a lot more building up and, and equipping of other people to do the work. I, I love going into high schools and teaching the high school students, uh, whether they be homeschooled or Christian schooled or whoever would have me, and teaching them how to reason with people, how to how to how to to, to understand that our faith is not blind, that our faith is reasonable, can be defended, teaching them the art and science of apologetics. You can go to apologetics dot great dash news dot org and get my whole 14 week course you can watch it for free my gift to you it's all yours and uh it, and it teaches them that way when they go to college and they go to the world instead of the world influencing them for atheism and godlessness they can influence the world as ambassadors for jesus christ and i i, I live and die for that i love that i love going into our our inner city kids uh, ministry at night and, and and working with the kids and teaching them the Bible and showing them the love of Christ. I love going into the prisons and the prisoners that, that listen to the word of God and they, they, they thank me for it and they want to hear the word of God. And that's so exciting. And it occurred to me that all the things that I like to do the most, I don't need to be a paid missionary to do. So I'm not going to be. Um, this next part is hard and sensitive. So I, I, I would like you to respect what I'm about to say. Uh, there's also another reason why I'm stepping down that, uh, in addition to that. And that is that there is a, a very sensitive uh, family issue that I've been dealing with for, for quite a while, actually, um, many years that most likely you don't know about because I don't, I'm a very open book. My family is not. Shelby, the kids, they don't like to be the center of attention. You know, I, I'm on the other hand, I'm very extroverted. I'll tell you, I'm going to, I'll tell you anything you want to know, but they don't. So a lot of you might not know that I've been struggling with a family issue. And I think it's, it's, it's grown and gotten to the point that it's, it's impacting the ministry. So it's best for the ministry that I step back and not be leading, uh, be in a, in a, in a leadership role, uh, for now. And, and that's hard for me because change is hard and, and, and all of that is hard. And I love doing what I do. And I, I, I'm committed to the Great Commission. I'm going to continue to do it, but it's just going to be, it's going to be different for a little while. Now, I know what human nature is like, because I know if I heard this news from somebody that, you know, that I followed, I'd be like, ooh, what is it? What's the sensitive family issue? Look, I would just ask you, myself, my Shelby, the kids, we're not public figures. 
We're not, we don't have paparazzi following us. We're not, uh, we're private people. And I would just ask you to please respect that. I'd also ask you to, if you do find out information, you know, understand that there's always more going on behind closed doors than, than you might realize, and you might not know all the details. We've already had people who don't know all the details say very hurtful, unhelpful things. Um, if, if you know all the details, I welcome your counsel. If you don't know all the details, please give prayer, give encouragement, um, ask questions if you, if you want. Uh, I'm going to be very limited about what I can answer because of a sensitive nature. But that's all I really need to say about that. But know this, we are not floundering and out there in the middle of nowhere without help. We've got plenty of counselors and pastors and friends and wise people that are looking after us that do know all the details, all the nitty gritty, and they've been helping us. And, and I thank you for that. Best thing you can do is just pray for us, send us encouragement, and uh, that'd be great. Uh, and I appreciate that. I know that's hard for me to ask because you know I know you're going to want to know what are all the details. I, I'm so, I just, we're not public figures. We just can't divulge all that to you. So uh, with that said, I'm very encouraged. Uh, for those of you who give financially, here's some business. And I'm sorry to have to you know, talk about that, but look, to do anything worthwhile costs money. Uh, if you want to run a business, if you want to run a family, you want to run a popsicle stand, whatever you want to run, certainly a ministry, it costs money to, to, to go out and to give Bibles and to give out tracts and to, and to pay for gasoline and, and all the things that it costs to do. And so uh, my last day as a missionary is June 30th. My last paycheck is July 15th, I think, right around there. And what that means is that I really need you, if you are willing, to continue to give. If you would continue to give through the end of June, that would be great. That way I can get my last paycheck, my health insurance can be paid all the way to the end of my employment, all my ministry reimbursements, all the, the ministry materials that I purchased to, in order to reach people can be paid for through the end of June. Now, here's the thing. If you do forget to give in June, you can give until the end of July. Reliant Mission, uh, they're the ones that, that you give to, that pay me, they're the ones that do all the taxes and all the accounting laws and they know all that stuff so that I don't have to know about that, I don't have to be an accountant, I can just be an evangelist. And so they're the ones that handle all that. They're gonna keep my account open until the end of July. So if anybody forgets to give, and what happens with that is if I get underpaid in June because there's not enough money to pay me, then if any funds come in July, it'll back pay me. So again, if you give regularly, please continue. Please consider continuing to give through the end of June. If you forget to give in June, you can give through July, and it will it will go to to what you intended to. Um, and that's sort of the business part. I had to discuss that. If you give electronically through Reliant, automatically they will stop it at the right time for you. So if you have any questions, you can call Reliant uh, Gift Services. You can call me. Uh, it's fine. I'll answer whatever questions you have about that. I do want to mention one thing. I hope it's not inappropriate. Um, I, I think that everyone who donates, donates because they want to. I'm actually really excited about that. Look, I like to donate to who I donate to. I get excited about doing it. It's my pleasure to do it. My assumption is that everyone who gives wants to give because they want to see the kingdom of God increase and advance. And so if, I, if you are saying, hey, what I'm going to do with the money that I normally give to the Somers, if, I, if you have something that God's put on your heart, terrific, great. If you don't, might I suggest the Wentz family, Aaron and Tanya. Aaron and Tanya are amazing. Aaron is my, my mentor. He is a great friend. He's a leader. I've learned from him for years. He's very faithful. He's also a missionary with Reliant, so it's very easy for you to transfer uh, your funds from my account to his account. Uh, he does amazing work at Michigan State University. He's, God has really opened the doors for him to share the gospel with international students who haven't heard. He's literally baptized uh, a number of students. I've been to Michigan to see his uh, to see his his group. It's very impressive, and he 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 disciples them. He just does that. He has a really great heart for evangelism and discipleship. He also is the brains behind the apologetics. Uh, materials that 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 I do that when I teach uh, pastors in Africa over zoom Aaron's been doing that for years and he does it for free for these pastors and missionaries and Christian workers not only in Africa but also in Asia in South America all over the place and people are literally using the materials that he wrote because he's got all these master's degrees and he's going for a doctorate because he's super smart and and he, he they're, they're using his materials to to reach out to people all over the globe literally if you do want to 
give to him. I need to read up my piece of paper. Just um, contact Reliant Missions, the gift services team. Uh, all you have to do is call them at 877-614-4600 and tell them that after your June gift, starting in July, uh, you want to move your gift from the Somer family to the Wentz family, W-E-N-T-Z, and you can give them fund number 7637, 7637. Hey, I do want to brag on Jesus. This is not a fair, failure that I'm stepping down. It's just a change of season. I'm excited. I'm going to still evangelize. I'm still committed to the gospel, still committed to the Great Commission. I'm still committed to being in touch with you guys. If you were friends of mine before I became a missionary, you know it's in my DNA to, to share cool things and to share neat ideas. And so anytime I come up with something cool that, or I discover something cool, or someone shares it with me, I'm going to want to share it with you. If you're on my email list, you'll, I'll continue to send out emails, maybe not as often. I'll continue to update my Facebook, maybe not my Facebook page, but my personal Facebook. So send me a friend request. I'll still be in, stay in touch. I'm not that hard to find. I've got a phone that you can email me, you can message me, you can uh, whatever you want to do. Um, I, I'm still excited about the Great Commission. I'm still excited about seeing Christians who don't think God can use them be used by God. It's an awesome thing. Whether you're an introvert, whether you're an extrovert, whether you're tall or short or good looking, me, <laughs> I'm not, or, or, or if you're, if you're, what, if, whoever you are, God can use you. Maybe you're quiet. Maybe you're the person that writes the gospel tract and you don't like people and you're afraid of them. That's fine too. God will use you however it can. And if I can be used to help you find your place as an ambassador for Christ, wow, I would think that's awesome. Thank you for listening to this. Thank you for being part of this ministry for the season that I've been uh, a full-time missionary. What a privilege it's been. I'm so glad that we partnered together. Again, even if you never gave a dime, if you prayed, if you encouraged, if you came, if you did any of that, then you're part of this. Uh, and I just want to tell you, it's, it's been a real joy. It will continue to be a joy. It's just going to look different starting June 30th. Please keep me in prayer. Keep my, um, my family in prayer. Uh, keep my new job in prayer. I hope it's starting on July 1st. I'm not 100% sure, but God is always taking care of me, and I trust that he can, will continue to do that. Thank you for your time and attention. I appreciate you watching this longer video than I wanted it to be, but I needed to get this information to you. Um, may God bless you as he uses you to be an ambassador for Christ. No higher calling. What an amazing gospel we have. What an amazing Christ we have. Jesus is awesome. If you don't understand why it is that Christians get so excited about Jesus, you might want to consider that you don't know him. If you don't know him, while there's still breath in your lungs, you can know him. He'll forgive you anything you've done. Turn from your sin and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross, taking on the sin of the world. He died. He was buried dead for real. And on the third day, just as was prophesied in the scriptures ahead of time, he rose from the dead. Hey, God bless you, and I hope that we'll keep in touch. Thank you so much.